Vice President, Consumer Equity Research Asia, X Japan at Nomura. He joins our guest host, Steve Bryce for Sanchar, both of them around the desk with us here at the SGX. Tony, uh, good to see you. Lay out your case for CPO. Okay, uh, what we are seeing with CPO is not much fundamental. See, essentially, uh, I know people are talking about demand destruction in China, inventory is piling up. But, but that? you look at the vegetable oil space in particular. We don't believe demand destruction happens much in food commodities unless prices go up the roof. So what's happening in China is people are switching over, or even in India is people are switching over from palm oil to soya oil. So if you look at the discount of palm to soya, it's almost at the decade old high, 30%. Uh, that's more of a question of which oil is coming when into the market. It's more of a timing issue. We are getting into the seasonally peak period, peak production period in the palm, which will taper off getting into the next couple of months. Historically, if you look at last 10 years, whenever that discount has been 30%, it has reversed very quickly in the next three, four months. So technically, you're looking for a comeback. So because the veg oil demand destruction hasn't happened. So mm -hmm. it's, it's just the veg oil commodities which haven't moved up. But okay. end of the day, most of the agri commodities are inter. Yeah. So how should investors play this? What's your advice from a stock perspective or a commodities perspective? What's the best approach? See, it has to be like, we do believe food inflation is a recurring concept and that will keep on fearing again and again. So we would be positive on the producers to an extent traders. Um, so definitely upstream makes much more sense than downstream. Now there you would want to play the players which have the highest leverage to these prices. And being in Asia, the only commodity we can play is palm oil, unfortunately. Okay. Why, why do you prefer upstream to downstream? Because prices will go up eventually, have to go up. So. Okay, Tyler, do you like Olam, Noble, on the midstream side, Golden Agri, Sign Derby on the upstream side? I'm surprised you haven't included Felder in that list. Uh, it's more of a valuation. IPO earlier. That partly has to do with that because it has already gone up. Uh, in terms of valuations, uh, that is reward for other palm oil players which have much more upside, which have much higher volume growth over the next five years. Uh, are there any political sense. implications here, I mean for Malaysia, because there's a fear that uh, Felder could become something of a political football in the run-up to the election? Uh, see, could and definitely leading up to the election, that's why that would remain a concern. That That's not only for Felda, that's also true for Sime Darby as well, so support the large caps in Malaysia. Yeah, you, you know, for, for not just uh, CPO, but for, for the ag sector overall in, in Asia, uh, great business, uh, right? You've got the demographics, you've got the income levels, people want to eat better, I mean, that whole story. Yeah. But productivity could certainly stand to improve. Is there a trade there? Is it, I don't know, uh, yeah. See, they are supply-driven cycles. Like demand perennially would go up. Like depends on four percent or six percent. That that would depend. It's, there would be supply disruptions. There will be policy responses. The thing with China and India is they are the biggest consumers, but they are not the biggest traders of agri commodities. Most of the commodities they produce, they consume themselves. So that's why they don't drive the global prices for most of these commodities. Okay. Apart from oil seeds, apart from sugar, uh, yeah. a couple of commodities. Uh, I was trying to get at, at whether there's a trade with ag input. Uh, right. companies. So, so, so the nice thing was we're saying that there is a case for yield increases which has to happen in China and India. If word has to be satisfied in terms of food, yeah. your crops and yields have to go up, and that's where your agri input companies would come into play. Jan irrigation, probably. So, United Phosphorus, like names in India. Okay. So, okay. so well, most of the chemical companies. companies. Yeah, one of the things that we've been highlighting is that obviously the massive increase in population that we're expecting over the next 10, 15 years, which we believe will put higher price or bring higher food prices. Mm -hmm. Is that, especially given limited land uh, available for right. cultivation, is this something that you're looking at as well? So, so that is one population. The two is the dietary habits are changing. Yeah. People are consuming more protein rich diet as they grow richer. Uh, so that will basically mean that more and more wild seeds compared to cereals. Uh, secondly, uh, in terms of uh, what will change in, uh, in, uh, in terms of India and China, which is again, we, they have to come to the party uh, to satisfy the word hanger. Uh, agri land is available only in Africa and to an extent Latin America, and they are way beyond, way behind in terms of infrastructure. So it's more of a 10 to 15 year story when Africa would basically start producing enough to satisfy the world demand, but for the next five to 10 years, you would see food prices going up. Challenge the risk of food price inflation. Is there a danger that we could revisit what we saw in 2007, 2008? Yeah, so the only difference what we are seeing is in Asia, it's still under control because crude prices are low, much lower than what they were in 07. They are interlinked. Veg oil prices and sugar prices haven't gone up that much, which are key commodities for Asia. But if corn prices, maize prices stay high in US, eventually they will flow down. It's a matter of time. It's a matter of two months or three months. But probably not 07 repeat, but definitely there is a significant case of upside. Tanish, thank you so much for joining us today. Appreciate it. That was Tanish Shori from Nomura.